Blizzard doing something greedy. Yeah, it's just another Tuesday. So many of you know that at one point, Overwatch 2 was the worst user-rated game on Steam by a long shot. With almost 200,000 reviews now, the game is sitting at an overwhelmingly negative review score of 10%. For a while, NBA 2K24 took that crown, but ever since, the review score for NBA 2K24 has gone up to 11%, so it's just barely grazing Overwatch 2. Now, Overwatch 2 currently isn't the worst user-rated game on Steam. It's the second worst user-rated game because War of the Three Kingdoms, for some reason, its review score plummeted to an 8% recently. I don't know what's going on. Regardless, Overwatch 2 is not in a particularly good place, being top three in terms of worst rated games of all time on such a popular platform is still not something to feel proud about. And I've already talked about all of Overwatch 2's woes from the way they got rid of Overwatch 1 and replaced it with Overwatch 2 without meaningful content additions that justify the two in Overwatch 2 and the changes that were put in place. Many of them were not well received. A lot of balancing things, the shift from 6v6 to 5v5, among other things. Monetization definitely just got worse across the board to pave the road for this free-to-play model that prioritizes battle passes and uh, cosmetics being paywalled instead of there being a gameplay path towards them. I mean, it's bad enough that people freaking miss loot boxes. That's when you know you screwed up. And then there is the big situation where hero missions were cut from PvE content, which a lot of people were looking forward to, and the thing that may have very well justified the two in Overwatch 2. And then most recently, Blizzard put out some lore by putting ages on characters, but those character ages don't match established lore in certain cases, so it left fans frustrated. And then that finally brings us to the latest shenanigans surrounding Overwatch 2 with the launch of Season 7. You can see right here that threads on the Overwatch subreddit look like this. Some of the most upvoted look like this. 5399 Go F yourself, Blizzard. Now, for some reason, this post has been removed by moderators, but you can see right here it had over 19,000 upvotes. And this is Canadian dollars, 53.99 Canadian dollars, and US dollars, that'd be 39.99 or $40. This bundle right here, which contains a skin that is highly coveted because it takes after Lilith from Diablo 4. This is a skin for the character Moira. And the only way to get this skin is by shelling out $40, which a lot of people are pissed about. And again, that's $40 in the US and Canada. It's $54. And scrolling down, you'll see that people in Australia are pretty mad because that's pretty much 60 Australian dollars. Ain't no way this shit is worth the same price as some fully fleshed games. This shit is me dying, says this one Reddit user. And plenty of people have taken to the forums to complain about this pricing. Once upon a time during the days of Overwatch 1, Every skin had some kind of gameplay path. Some skins were rarer than others. Some skins you had to work for harder than others to earn, but you could earn them. In the case of Overwatch 2, though, some skins are straight up paywall. Some of the most highly coveted are straight up paywall. And so the sense of reward from just playing the game and having the chance of earning a highly coveted skin just is no longer there. So there's just less incentive to keep playing. The rewards loop is nowhere near as good as it used to be. And again, it's making people miss loot boxes. That's what's going on here with this Lilith skin. Blizzard has come under fire for locking, eye-catching Diablo 4 skins behind a $40 bundle with no gameplay path towards them. It'd be one thing if these bundles unlocked the skins instantaneously, but for those who don't want to pay $40 for this bundle, they could still find a gameplay path towards them by continuously playing the game, you name it. But the fact that the only way to get these skins is by shelling out $40 and not being able to buy it individually for cheap or anything like that, it's just got people sick and tired, especially because Blizzard is walking on thin ice, given how much they've screwed up Overwatch 2 and how much they've upset fans to the point that fans felt like they had to bombard Overwatch 2 Steam listing and download it enough to make it the first or second place in terms of worst rated game of all time on Steam. Here are further details from IGN. So we got two skins in particular, Lila skin for Moira and an area skin for Farah. Both of these are part of season seven called Rise of Darkness and part of the $40 ultimate pass bundle for season seven. 
every season essentially has its own you know ultimate pass bundle and one of the things you want to do with the launch of a new season is present some kind of major reward that you obtain by playing the season itself but when some of the most coveted rewards are purely monetization driven it discourages people from engaging with the gameplay and rewards loop and progression loop of a season now this bundle does include other things 20 battle pass tier skips premium battle pass for season 7 2000 overwatch coins the skins and then highlight intros as well as some sprays but some people may not want all that stuff they might just want the lilith skin but they have to purchase this particular bundle to get it they absolutely have to spend 40 dollars. there's no other cheaper option or no gameplay option this ign article also reported on what this now deleted post said Basically, this user named Yeo Procol said that Blizzard was being greedy, which absolutely they are being, saw the new Moira and Farah skin in the trailer and was excited for the first time in a long time. Some of the best looking and only skins for them in a long time, and it's, of course, locked behind a shitty payware bundle. Not even available for premium BP, but the goddamn ultimate that they want money for. I should have seen this coming way to be greedy and ruin the excitement blizzard and this was a sentiment echoed by many people across forums and social media and ijin compiled a bunch of tweets where people are just baffled and disbelief that they would go this far to lock such a coveted reward for a season when this is the kind of reward that would encourage people to come back and play overwatch 2 more consistently to be able to earn such a skin and to be able to feel the satisfaction of you know, having earned it and owning it and being able to, you know, show it off. And this were skins that were teased with a trailer. The marketing made a big deal out of it, which made it seem like this would be all part of the season seven experience. But it's not really an experience when the only way to get something is just to shell out money. That's just them asking for your credit card. It's not them asking you to engage in something fun that yields something satisfactory. Some members of the community have also noticed how Season 7's Ultimate Battle Pass bundle is a worse value than those that came before it. As detailed here by Reddit user Captain Awesome 18 the Ultimate Battle Pass bundle for Season 7 is $40. It was priced at $30 for Seasons 3 to 5, but it was raised to $40 for Season 6 because of the inclusion of the Invasion Bundle. They now kept the pricing at $40 without the additional value of the PvE missions. And for the first two seasons, there was no Ultimate Battle Pass. Instead, it was the $40 Watchpoint Pack. But ever since then, it was $30 until the Invasion Bundle came along with the PvE missions that they decided would justify the additional $10. But now, they have that additional $10. They have the $40 pricing for the Ultimate Battle Pass Bundle but without anything to justify that additional $10, they included less content in the Season 7 Ultimate Battle Pass bundle, but kept the price the same as the previous season, which had straight up more content. And beyond that, they force you to buy this bundle to get the coveted legendary skins here, namely the Lilith skin. And given the current negative sentiments surrounding Overwatch 2 right now, Blizzard does not have the wiggle room to pull something like this right now. They have to find ways to win over the community by being generous and this is the furthest thing they could have done from that. People can't even use their leftover Overwatch coins, a premium currency that they have bought and accrued and saved up. They have to buy this stuff directly. Some people don't want the additional coins because they've already got plenty of coins saved up and they just want the Lilith skin and want to spend their coins, but there's no option there. So even the spending aspect is all kind of very stingy. The way you get the Diablo 4 themed skins, it's just very restrictive. They want to force you to shell out that money they don't want you to use the savings and benefits of having played Overwatch 2 over the years. It just sucks, man. Th this kind of crap just uh, exemplifies why the free-to-play model is the worst thing that could have happened to Overwatch 2. Now, people are hoping that with the recent regime change at Activision Blizzard, leadership at Overwatch 2 can change with it. Uh, for those who didn't keep up with this news, Xbox recently officially acquired Activision Blizzard King, as in it finally went through after all the legal battles and government bodies they had to Vince. And with that also came the departure of Bobby Kotick, whose tenure as CEO of Activision Blizzard will end at the end of 2023. That's not necessarily guarantee that things will change at Blizzard, but if Microsoft can kind of take the reins a little bit, still maintain creative autonomy at Blizzard, but kind of guide the ship in a better direction uh, to emphasize quality over greed, uh, then maybe there's hope yet, but that's just no guarantee. It's just painful to see a franchise like Overwatch, which I was once just genuinely so invested in, just go down in this direction and just 
continuously engage in these kinds of missteps and all of these decisions that continuously push the community away during a time when the community feels more dejected than ever. Headlines surrounding Overwatch 2 always seem to be so dire. I mean, you got headlines like this, Overwatch fans unite to hate on $40 Diablo skins in the latest season. Which, I mean, yeah, that's kind of what's happening right now. And it just feels like Blizzard is doing everything in their power to add fuel to that fire. Instead of trying to find ways to kind of meet the community halfway, Overwatch 2, it's all just gone wrong, man. And um, I'd love nothing more than for Overwatch to come back in a strong way. But uh, so long as these kinds of decisions continue to happen, uh, I don't know, it's just Overwatch's optics will continue to decline and the health of its player base and its viewership and the content creation behind it just the general state of the community will continue to decline as well and uh yeah it's just uh, it's all a shame because overwatch as an ip just has so much potential that has gone untapped and uh in many ways like corrupted by all these uh bafflingly corporate decisions that hopefully we'll see reduced uh, with new leadership at Activision Blizzard and hopefully just a revamp of how things are handled at Blizzard itself. But only time will tell. In the meantime, though, this is where we're at when it comes to the discourse surrounding Overwatch. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Season 7 of Overwatch 2 and the fact that the Diablo 4 themed legendary skins are strictly locked behind a $40 bundle. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young Gao.